Hello and welcome. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about developing our students' oral and written competences, in particular their production skills, speaking and writing. Learning to speak and write in a foreign language isn't easy. Speaking and writing are complex skills. They're difficult for our students to learn and they're often challenging for us to teach. In this video, I want to look at ways we can make our teaching of speaking and writing more efficient and more effective. Let's start by looking at how we currently teach speaking and writing. Most of us use what's called a model and performance approach. We show our students a model and then we ask them to perform. In the case of writing, we usually give them a reading text as a model. We ask them to read the text, do some comprehension exercises, and then we ask them to write. We use the same approach when we teach speaking skills. We ask our students to listen to a model, and then we ask them to perform. For example, our students listen to two teenagers talking about their families. They do some comprehension exercises to check understanding, and then we ask them to talk about their own families in pairs. Is the model and performance approach the best method for teaching the complex skills of speaking and writing? Let's take the model and performance approach out of the classroom for a moment and apply it to another complex skill. Let's say swimming. Imagine that you ask me to teach you to swim, and I agree, and decide to use the model and performance approach. I take you to a swimming pool, I get into the pool and swim up and down a few times, waving to you on the side. Then I get out of the pool and I push you into the deep end. That's the model and performance approach. Are you happy? No, because you're drowning. Have you learned to swim? Definitely not. Clearly, the model and performance approach is not an effective way of teaching a complex skill like swimming. What should I have done? I should have broken down swimming into micro skills. I should have asked you to hold the bar. I should have encouraged you to put your face into the water. And then I should have asked you to kick your legs. I should have helped you to learn these micro skills step by step. Then when you had enough confidence in performing these micro skills, I could have asked you then to put them all together and to swim. Recent research into the field of human performance supports the idea that the best way to learn a complex skill is to break it down into micro skills, perf perfect the micro skills, and then put them together into successful performance. Researchers have studied people who excel in various different fields, music, sport, academics, and they found that they train and practice in similar ways. Professional footballers don't spend all their time playing football. They break the macro skill of football into micro skills, such as passing the ball, shooting, heading the ball. They perfect the micro skills with the help of feedback from a coach, and then they put them together in their performance. The same is true, for example, of musicians. They don't spend all their practice time playing symphonies and concertos. They practice micro skills, doing scales, difficult finger position exercises, breathing exercises, ear training. Research tells us that the best way to learn a complex skill, whether that's learning to play a sport or a musical instrument, or learning to speak and write in a foreign language is to break the macro skill down into micro skills. Be active and engaged when practicing and to get instant feedback at the micro skill level. Researchers have called this type of practice purposeful practice. We need to use a similar approach when we're teaching the complex skills of speaking and writing in English. 
We can't simply throw our students into the deep end of the English language swimming pool. We need to modify the model and performance approach that we currently use to include some purposeful practice. But what is purposeful practice in teaching speaking and writing? Well, we want to break these skills down into smaller, more doable steps. So we need to include a series of graded, guided and controlled pre-writing and pre-speaking tasks. These tasks focus on areas of writing and speaking that are difficult for our students. Now let's see how the theory translates into practical classroom activities. Imagine we're teaching Scuola Media students and we want them to write about a city they visited with their family or classmates. We start with a model. So this is a reading text in which a teenage boy describes his visit to York, a city in the north of England. This is a clear model of what we will ask the students to do later. We provide one or two comprehension tasks to make sure that the students have understood the text and to encourage them to explore it more closely and absorb some of the language. At this point, the model phase has been completed and we move on to the purposeful practice phase. We want to break the macro skill of writing into micro skills. So we start by asking our students to complete model sentences, the type of sentences they will use in their own work. In this example, students transfer the information in the table into gapped model sentences. This is an easy first step that encourages students to write clear models for their written work. Step two should challenge the students more. They're no longer provided with gap, gap sentences, so now they have to use the information in the table to write complete sentences. We're developing both their confidence and their competence. In step three, we move away from single sentences and we ask students to make a more personal contribution. Here we provide them with prompts and ask them to make notes. Helping students to generate ideas is an important part of preparing them to write or speak. Sometimes students find it difficult to generate their own ideas. However, a more common problem is that they, th they try to express ideas that are beyond their limited linguistic competence. They turn to Italian and the resulting oral and written production is unsatisfactory. It's important that we include a phase of purposeful practice that either helps students to come up with ideas or defines the limits within which they should work in order to be successful. This approach can also be applied to speaking. We ask our students to ask and answer questions about what they did last weekend, for example. We tell them to imagine that they visited Hexham Zoo or they've been to Kings Park Music Festival. In the model phase, students listen to two teenagers talking about their weekend. Ryan has been to Fantasy Fun Park and he's answering his friend Mia's questions. In step one, the students listen and complete Ryan's answers. The focus is on affirmative sentences in the past with lots of examples of irregular past forms, an obvious stumbling block for some students. In step two, the focus is on question forming in the past simple, often a difficult area for students. Students must complete me as questions while listening to the recording. This is followed by a pronunciation exercise, which encourages students to say, did you, more naturally. It also encourages students to repeat sentences in the interrogative form. By doing this, they build up a bank of correct models for their own personal work. The model and performance approach that we currently use shows students how to write and speak in English, but it does not teach students how to write and speak in English. It's based on the assumption that if students can speak and write in Italian, 
then they can also speak and write in English. But we know that that's not true. By adding a step-by-step -step phase of purposeful practice, we actually teach students these complex skills. So what are some of the advantages of including purposeful practice in our teaching? By incorporating purposeful practice into our, our approach to teaching speaking and writing, we're not simply helping our students to complete the end task. We're taking time to teach them a thought process, a way of thinking. The purposeful practice steps guide students away from Italian and direct them towards English. It encourages students to create and store clear, correct and detailed models on which they can base their work. This approach makes explicit what good students do implicitly. Good students think, prepare and then act. Weak students don't think, don't prepare, they simply act. By introducing purposeful practice steps, we're encouraging our students to slow down, reflect, think of what they know, and then perform. Quality feedback is an essential part of good teaching. We can give excellent feedback, but if our students aren't listening, then we're simply wasting our time. Feedback on a finished work is often overwhelming, particularly for weaker students, because of the volume of corrections. If we give feedback post-performance, then our students are less likely to listen to our advice. The horse has bolted from the stable and we'll never catch it. Feedback at the purposeful practice stage is more effective. It's less overwhelming because we're focusing on a single aspect of the task. It allows us to correct misconceptions at every stage of the process and students are more receptive because they know that if they listen, their final performance will improve. It makes our teaching more responsive to our students' needs. Let's talk about time because I know a lack of time is always an issue. Does including purposeful practice mean that we'll spend more time on teaching speaking and writing? Not necessarily. It's true that we may spend more time giving feedback in the pre-writing or pre-speaking phase, but this will lead to more successful performance and there, therefore less time spent in giving unlistened to feedback in the post-writing phase. Prevention is better and more time efficient than cure. A step-by-step -step approach is more inclusive. Weak students and students with learning difficulties are more involved because the work is graded and gradual. This approach can allow us to introduce an element of differentiation into our teaching. Students can progress through the steps at their own pace. Fast finisher exercises are included to challenge high achieving students. The step-by-step -step purposeful practice approach is a more effective and more inclusive way of teaching speaking and writing. It decreases frustration, minimizes failure, and allows more of our students to experience success in the classroom, which is what every teacher wants. I hope this video has given you food for thought. Thank you so much for listening and until the next time, goodbye.